All right, well, thanks for joining me here today. We're going to talk about the story of David and Goliath, which really, I, I think it's my favorite story in the entire Bible. It's, it's got it all. It's an inspirational story. The, the little guy overcomes insurmountable odds and conquers the imposing enemy. You know, it, it, it's hard to get really any better than that. But what I want to show you, what I like about this story is just how down to earth and applicable to life is. Uh, all you've got to do is take a look at some of the symbols in this story and you'll find that there's some extra, uh, extra meaning that you can take out of this and, and make your life better as a result. The, the main principle we're working here with is this idea of mastering the basics. David has mastered some very basic spiritual principles and that's what allows him to beat Goliath. That's what we're going to see. And I heard a, an interesting Kung Fu master story and, and the, the essence of it is he says to his student, look, the enemy is not afraid of the 10,000 punches you've practiced one time. But the enemy is deathly afraid of the one punch you've practiced 10,000 times. And that's the principle we're working with here. If you can take just a few concepts and master them, you can overcome and slay your own giants as well. So let's take a look and see how this all you know, works out. The story opens up and Goliath, he is taunting the children of Israel. He says to them, you can't beat me. And he goes out there for 40 days and does this. And what we know is whenever we see the number 40, a little, little flag should go up for us saying that, hey, this is about a trial, a, a, a temptation, a, a, uh, a testing. And temptation, it's, it's not in the sense of, oh, should I eat that cupcake or should I not? Here, temptation is about being concerned that you can't measure up to the calling God's put on your life. It's the kind of temptation of, oh, this is the person that I want to be. But there are these things holding me back, my environment, my heredity, these bad genes I've got, whatever it is, I can't get there and I don't see how I'm going to make it. And when we get worried and depressed and anxious because this is who I want to be, but I'm just not there and I don't see how I'm going to get there. That's the kind of temptation that's going on here. Well, David comes along on the scene and he says, hey, this is no problem. I've got this guy. I can take him out. It's God's fight. Now notice, he says it's God's fight, but he doesn't just, you know, grab a beer and go back to the fields and, and watch after the sheep. He's not passive in this process. He says, yes, this is God's fight, but I'm going to take some action. So what he does is he goes to a tried and true method for slaying giants, something that he's pretty confident himself in. He goes and he grabs himself five smooth stones and he's going to slingshot this guy down. Now these smooth stones don't come from just anywhere. One of the key pieces of the symbolism in this story is that they come from a brook. They didn't pull them out of the ground, they didn't pull them out of the pocket. You know, he, he goes and finds some running water and gets them. And we, this is important because water in Scripture has this meaning of a higher truth, some sort of a spiritual principle, okay? We see it because Naaman, He's healed when he washes in the Jordan. We see it where John the Baptist, what does he do when he baptizes somebody? He dunks them in water. These are, this is a spiritual principle that changes our life. It cleanses us. It gives us life. And it's a way to symbolize a changed way of thinking. We see water in the Garden of Eden. We see water at the end of Scripture in the, uh, the New Jerusalem. So water has this this symbol of being a higher spiritual teaching. It's true. Stone also represents truth, but it's a different kind of truth. It's one that's, you know, it's down to earth. It's, it's right here and now. We can put our hands on it and, 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 and hold it. It's rock solid, right? We, see, we know this because, well, in Scripture we see that stones represent or are used to kind of witness or testify, or be a, a, a memorial to a deal or arrangement. Jacob does this with stones. Joshua does this with stones. And we also see it in the Ten Commandments. It's written in stone, not on paper or anything else, because the stone is about 
divine law that's put into practical terms. Thou shalt not steal. You don't get any more practical than that, right? And that's why it's written in stone. It's permanent. Don't, you don't mess with this. So when we think about this, what is it that David is actually throwing at Goliath? Well, he's throwing a practical truth that's been formed by a higher spiritual principle. You know, years of running water, just going over that thing and, and just smoothing it out and making it ripe to attack the giant. That's what he is throwing at him. And so when you have a situation in life, when you are in despair, when you have anxiety, well, how do you get rid of it? Well, you give it the truth. Because whatever, ha whatever happens when we get anxiety, it's, it's basically our mind is being presented with a false reality. Oh, that this isn't going to work out. Nobody likes you. You're no good at this. Well, look, the reality is that God loves you and you have value and you're going to be led to your cause in time, if not already. The truth can dispel all these false beliefs. And it's because David has mastery of just a few simple concepts that he masters, he defeats Goliath. And we too can slay giants in our life, and we have some mastery of some basic concepts. Now, let me give you some ideas here as far as some smooth stones in my life. You know, one of the things I've been doing, I live in Australia, I've been here for seven years now, and I've been learning this game called cricket. And despite spending a fair bit of time practicing and training, had some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm still no good at it. I'm like this guy here. I'm getting bowled out. It's kind of like a strikeout in baseball. It's no good. It's not happiness. And let me tell you, when it happens, my ego is in no good place. I'm frustrated that I've trying to get to this place and I'm not measuring up. It's not working out. What am I doing here? I'm an American playing cricket. This is ridiculous. So my ego goes into all sorts of places, but I have to use some smooth stones. And a smooth stone for me in this situation is that, you know what? God didn't put me on this earth to be a cricket champion. Let it go. Let it go. Because when I leave this field, you know, my wife's still there. She doesn't care whether I get one run or a thousand runs or no runs. It just, it just doesn't matter. My kid doesn't care. All he cares is that his dad comes home and has some fun with him. Whether he's great at cricket or not, it doesn't matter. We have other more serious challenges in life than our failures at cricket. But, you know, what if you've got a business and that's not working out? We feel like, oh no, my whole financial world's falling apart. How am I going to resolve this? How am I going to pay the bills? How is this going to happen? We start piling up this anxiety and saying, I'm never going to be there. But the scripture teaches us that God clothes us. He knows that he, we need stuff, right? He says, I clothe the lilies, I feed the birds, and don't you think that I know what you need to? Your Father in, in heaven knows you need things and I'll take care of you. So when we have that anxiety of all the pressure we're putting on ourselves, nobody else is putting it on, we're putting it on ourselves, we say, you know what, this is all going to work out. In the end, we're not judged by how much money we have and stuff like that. We're, we're judged by how good of a people we are. That's what's important in life. And it's important also that we understand how this works in the sense that Saul, before David goes into battle, says, look, let me give you my armor. Take my armor. Use that. Be smart about this. David says, no, I haven't tested it. He doesn't have mastery of the armor. And we also know that the armor is man-made. It's used for metal and it's formed by people. You win not by using things that people make. You win by using things that God has made. God made the stone and he smoothed it out. That's what's going on right there. So now it's... It's your turn. What kind of smooth stones, what kind of a practical, down-to-earth teaching can you think of that's been formed by God? It's something that happens in your life that's been used repeatedly over and over again, and you found as an effective weapon against the giant of anxiety and despair and, and temptation. How do you beat this guy, Goliath? Well, you beat him with a smooth stone. So I hope maybe you've got some and you'll share some in the comments. I'd love to hear what you've got, how you've used it. I think it'd be helpful because somebody else just might find that your smooth stone works for them as well. Well, that's what I've got for you here today. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing this. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to hit like and subscribe and I'll keep pumping them out. Thanks, all the best, and God bless.